from WDTN. This is Operation Football. It most certainly is week two of Operation Football, in fact. And tonight, we have highlights lined up from 10 games from all over the Miami Valley, including Troy at Xenia, Bellbrook at Fairborn, and Carroll at Beaver Creek, just to name a few. So let's tee it up, kick it off, and get this show started. Well, Jack, we begin the night in Clayton, where a couple of playoff teams from a year ago squared off. The Fairmont Firebirds landed at Northmont to take on the Thunderbolts. It was our Operation Football Premier Health Game of the Week. Ethan Fitzgerald was on the sidelines and has the story. Well, this was the perfect game for strategy. Do you like to air it out? Do you like to keep it on the ground? We got two teams with two different styles. Let's see how it played out. We have a battle of the Monts. Fairmont on the road taking on Northmont, a team that put 56 on the board last week. The Bolts looking to establish the ground game early. Devin Chatham's the 5'7 junior follows his blockers and gets the first down through the contact. But if you didn't know, the run game belongs to the Fairmont Firebirds. Aaron Jackson takes the pitch and he decides to take the Bolts with him, fighting for the extra yards, but the Firebirds come up empty. Still in the first, switching sides, this is a name you should all take note of. QB Miles Johnson airs this one out right into the hands of numero uno Justin Golson. He had three touchdown grabs last week, now he has four on the season. Bolts take a 7-0 lead with 6.48 left in the first half. Later on, the Firebirds trying to move the offense, but this pitch is just too much to handle. It bobbles around some, but the Bolts do recover. All right, hold on to your seats. Johnson is locked and loaded. He scrambles, but ends up throwing across his body to the wide open Golson. Did I mention he had four touchdowns? Well, you might want to change that. Check the skills on display here. Juke, spin, and drag. Holy smokes. That man is playing like a human bolt. Northmont jumps out to a 15-0 lead early in the second. <laughs> Well, Johnson back under center, but the pocket collapses. What a big hit, jeez. But as you may have seen, the face mask is there. Johnson okay on the play. But the Firebird defense still hungry. Johnson toying with the secondary, but this time the bolts come up empty. That's a pick by Fairmont's Ryan Hall. Okay, the Firebirds did not throw a single pass in the first half. So they try another pitch, and this one goes the wrong direction. Northmont jumps on it and they still have a 14-0 lead going into the half. Second half now, Firebirds running back Jesse DeGlow took a lot of carries in this one. Fairmont comes up empty but adds seven just before the end of the third quarter. And guys, there's a lightning delay in this one, so I'll send it back to you guys for the score update. All right, thanks, Ethan. In the fourth quarter, the Thunderbolts lead the Firebirds 21-7. This game will resume tomorrow at 10 a.m. Our thanks also to Northmont Athletic Director McCall Harding and all the great folks in Thunderbolts country for hosting our tailgate party. Join us next week at Centerville when the Elks host the Alter Knights. All right, let's keep the highlights rolling. Bellbrook at Fairborn tonight, Hutch. Time winding down first half. The Golden Eagles up 21-0 and looking for more, but the running back hit hard by Mark Peter Angelo. He'll jar the ball loose. Hunter Warner is there to recover the fumble. So the Skyhawks were looking to get on the board, but here comes James Utak with a big quarterback sack, and that ends those plans. We move ahead to the third quarter now. Fairborn going to the air again on the rollout. Nice job to keep his feet, but he throws across the field, and that's normally bad. Alex Westbrook with the interception. Then on the very next play, Brendan Lebensky going deep to Nolan Sizemore. Look how beautiful this play is. He'll haul it in from 31 yards out. That's a touchdown. Justin Sloan would add another score as Justin takes the handoff and gets a five-yard touchdown. Belbrick improves to 2-0 with a 42-0 win over Fairborn. To New Lebanon, the home of our former great Bob Scoop Phillips. Dixie playing host to Tri-Village. The Greyhounds scoring first when our favorite number gets called. The handoff goes to number two, Keith Thomas, the senior tailback around the right side for the 15-yard touchdown. Tri-Village answers on their first possession. Austin Bruner around the left side and in for the two-yard score. We're tied at seven in the second quarter. The Patriots take the lead when Austin Bruner takes the handoff, and he's bringing it 13 yards into the house and into your living room. How you doing? Tri-Village looking for more. Before the game, Zach Mitchell's dad told me to get him on TV while Dixie Senior Safety earns this highlight with the interception, and it was a meet and greet with me. Ouch. Dixie unable to capitalize, though. Tri-Village takes a 21-7 lead when Lane Sarver decides to tuck it and run. The freshman quarterback lands in the end zone for the 13-yard score. But hold the phone on the ensuing kickoff. Watch Dixie's Hunter Lease catch it. 
At the 29, the senior finds running room, and like a greyhound, he's off to the races for the 71-yard score. The celebration, the best part, a little Johnny football jester. <laughs> Hunter Lee, say you earned it. Tri-Village leads Dixie in the second half. 27-19, the game is in a weather delay. All right, let's head down to Welcome Stadium. Fenwick taking on Belmont tonight. First quarter, it's the Bison defense coming out swinging. Fenwick tries to run the ball on first down, but Ray G. Warden's there to get the tackle behind the line. Belmont forces a three and out, but the Falcons come right back on their next drive, and they strike from the air. Sully Jenick finds Thomas Vogelsang. Down the sidelines, he goes for a 40-yard pickup. We end the first quarter scoreless. Then to open up the second quarter, it's Jenick attacking through the skies. He'll go back to Vogelsang for a 15-yard touchdown. 7-0 Fenwick. Falcons strike again in the second quarter. Jenick with the pump fake, and he hits Robert Plasseri for a 61-yard touchdown. The Falcons up 14 to nothing, but the Bison get on the board before the half. The handoff goes to Jason Wagner. The senior fights through the middle of the pack and then off to the races for the 43-yard touchdown. However, it was Fenwick winning this game tonight, 30 to 16. Next up, Butler at Tecumseh. The Aviators tried to take flight early, but the pass here is gonna de be deflected and picked off by Q Kuriozovic. That sets up great field position. Q Kuriozovic, try to say that three times. Butler can play a little defense too. Gavin Gasella lays down the lumber to end this drive. Boom, the arrows though would get back on track. Davey Burner turns on the burners and he is gonna pick up the first down and it is hard earned. And that's gonna set up Davey Burner again this time from two yards out and it's seven nothing arrows. Second quarter, it's the Aviators on the move. Ryan Martin going to find room down the sideline, and he is going to take it to the house from 10 yards out. The Aviators go on to win it as we go to the scoreboard. It's Butler, big over Tecumseh, 49-28. to Trotwood loses its first game in a long time, 33-6. to Greenview, a winner over Waynesville, 40-8. to Troy Christian shuts out Bradford, 42-0. And it was Greenville defeating Stebbins, 49-19. Congratulations to the Carlisle Marching Indians, our Operation Football Band of the Week. Under the direction of John Oliver and Kyle Shuckman, the Marching Indians are 76 members strong. Now this year's show is entitled Rain, and it features all original music. The band has competitions coming up at Fenwick, Fairmont, and Miamisburg, and we wish them all the best of luck. Congratulations once again to the Carlisle Marching Indians, our Operation Football Band of the Week.
Virginia visiting Troy. The Trojans get on the board first with this great pass from junior quarterback Braden Siler to junior wideout Tucker Rasky. 40 yards, 7 nothing Troy. It's the Bucks D coming up big though here. This interception off a Trojan player and it, he's taking it in for 25 yards. That's the senior defensive back Blaine Dudley and we are tied at 7. Next Xenia possession. They're going to turn the ball over with this fumble, and Troy's Austin Blair is going to recover it. The Trojans going to take advantage of the miscue. Senior running back Sam Jackson runs it into the end zone for six. The Trojans go up 14-7. That game is going to be, this game, however, is going to be postponed to Saturday at 11, with Troy leading Xenia 21-14. All right, Hutch, let's head to Carlisle, where the Indians played host to Kenton Ridge tonight. The Carlisle defense with a big hit early. Ernie Bray, oh, he will flatten the ball carrier. The Cougars didn't score on that drive, but after forcing a three and out, it's Andrew Good on the punt return for Kenton Ridge, and the senior finds plenty of daylight down the near sideline. 60 yards he goes, and that's a touchdown. We move ahead to the second quarter. Cougars up 14 to nothing now, and adding six more on the quarterback keeper by Dylan Lehman. And it's 20 to nothing, Kenton Ridge. Now it's Lehman showing off his arm. Just before the half, he'll send a perfect rainbow to Andrew Good. That's a touchdown. And that's a big win tonight for Kenton Ridge. Hawaiian night at Frank Zink Field. Beaver Creek battling Carroll. We pick it up in the second half with Carroll trailing 18 to seven. And the quarterback keeper will take it down inside the five yard line. On the next play, the Patriots senior running back Frederick Butts punches it in from five yards out. The Patriots trailing 18 to 13 at that point. Carroll again with the trick play. Trent Fox pitches to Sam Sievert and he tosses a 20 yard touchdown pass to Donovan Lajones. And the Patriots take the lead 19 to 18. Beaver Creek coming right back with a score of their own as senior running back Sebastian Rendon runs it in from 10 yards out. Stretching over the goal line. The Patriots get the one point win at Beaver Creek, 25 to 24. All right, Hutch, let's head all the way up to Auglaes County. Covington at Minster tonight. Wildcats up 20 to six and looking for more. Jacob Niemeyer goes deep. Trent Rokerman behind the defense, almost loses it, but hangs on to make a nice catch. 40 yard touchdown, 27 to six, Minster in control. Bucks though would answer Cade Schmelzer's pass to Andrew Cates. Looks like a touchdown. But officials say, no, son, you're at the one-yard line. So, no problem. Schmelzer does it himself. The quarterback keeper, they get the two-point try. They don't get the two-point try, and it's 27-12. Final minute of the first half, Wildcats driving. Niemeyer threads the needle to Jack Heitbrink, and he's down at the two-yard line. A couple plays later, clock running. Cats try to punch it in, but the play is blown up by Braden Wiggins. Nice play by the Bucks D, but let's go to the scoreboard. Well, we got a final in this one. No lightning up there. Minster wins it 39 to 26. Piqua, a 20 point win over Lima Senior tonight. It was Northwestern beating Northeastern 42 to 12. Graham, a winner over Southeastern 27 to 14. And Bethel knocks off Dayton Christian 41 to 7. Red, gray, and white. Go, gray, hounds, go. Hype it up for your home team. Congratulations to the Dixie Greyhounds, our Operation Football Cheerleaders of the Week. Say hello to Lillian Peterzak. Chloe Davenport, McCallie Isaac, Isabel Zimba, Olivia Washington, Harley Nation, Mariah Kramer, Lucille Nace, Katie Crow, Carrie Thompson, Samantha Dunn, Kylie Welsh, and Bailey Klaus. Three cheers for the Dixie Greyhounds, our Operation Football Cheerleaders of the Week. You've had the names tonight, Hutch. Tough ones. Hey, we're taking our final timeout. But when we come back, we're going to take up to Mercer County. That's where St. Henry played host to Eaton, plus our big play of the night. Stick around. Operation Football continues right after this.
Eaton at St. Henry. Here come the Redskins looking to go 2-0 on the season. St. Henry's opening drive. Sam LaFeld rolls out, hits Jared Fishball wide open. It's a four-yard touchdown, 7-0 Redskins. Then on the first play from scrimmage on their very next drive, LaFell fires outside to Zach Niekamp. He has the edge. He has the end zone. 37 yards on the score. 14-0 Redskins. And St. Henry shuts out Eaton tonight 62 to nothing. All right, Hutch, it's time for a big play of the night. And for that, we go back to the first game we showed you tonight. Our game of the week. Check this out. Northmont against Fairmont. Now, they're going to resume this game tomorrow morning. But, boy, this play will stay in the record books. Just a beautiful pass from quarterback Miles Johnson to Golson, who stops, breaks a few ankles. There's four guys around him, and he fights his way into the end zone for the touchdown. That is one heck of a play as uh, Miles Johnson hits Justin Golson. And that, my friend, is our big play of the night. All the highlights from tonight's show, including that big play of the night, online at WDTN.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great Labor Day holiday weekend.